about six hours of sanding my mistake of those runs, I got the best out and gave another coat. As you can see, some improvements. Lessons learned. At first, I kind of brushed it. And uh, using a brush on some smooth fiberglass like this going down, I've learned, will cause drips no matter how much you've used. So there you can see the improvement. A couple things. I use a roller like this and a little tiny brush. And the little tip is, I'm going to show you right here. When you use a brush, always do the top first. That way if it drips, you can be able to catch it with the roller. So I'm doing all the corners as you see right here like this. I'm going to do the corners top corners just like I did that I did the top I did that with a roller but when you have a small area I'll just use the brush and then I'll use the little roller this is a four inch little roller and uh, the more I use it the better it gets and then I'll just go like this to the side and that is how I got the better results like I said this was the hardest painting I've ever done in all my painting projects I've done now, if you go on my YouTube channel and see the Venture 17 sailboat, that was Rattle Can by Hunter, and I, Hunter Green, Rust-Oleum paint. And with that boat, I never really had experience painting it, because every time I scuffed it, I just, you know, rattle canned it, and I didn't even prep it. I just, and it always looked like a million bucks, you know, because I had a couple of varnished teak woods with a white cabin, and it gave it a really nice, expensive look. So like I said, these things are, you know, being left out in the water and being used. And as I was painting, a bird landed right up there on the uh, thing. So, and I bugs everywhere. So, like I said, it's not it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just wanted to, I couldn't stand the runs. It really was really irritating. And so I'm much better satisfied with the results here. So, ahoy there, Idaho model shipbuilder, back to work. Three coats of paint this top took after about two months of sanding and covering every little gel coat crack. I think we got this boat looking like new again. Got the anti-slip just like a diving board. Stuff worked out great. And ran out of white paint so I was a little creative with the nice original Columbia Blue flooring with anti-slip paint as well. It's gonna look really nice when we add all that wood finish. Very satisfied with the white top. A view of the bigger hole here as you see. I'm gonna turn this hole for the uh, depth meter as I showed you earlier in the video I'm gonna use this hole for the depth meter so that way I don't have to really fill it in basically I think this hole's a little smaller so I might have to grind it a little bit wider for the depth meter to fit in there and then I'll put some 5200 on it I sounded the surrounded area with 80 grit sandpaper cleaned it out with some uh, acetone letting it dry and for the sensible equipment I used a, a Dawn water mixture to clean that out. So I'm going to go ahead and use this 5200 marine sealant. You can either use Fast Cure. Others have used uh, 4200 which a lot of guys will say well uh, so I can remove it someday but believe me this kind of setting unit I've, I've put these on before boats they're pretty permanent and uh, you know 20 plus years really at that point I want to trust my life with 5200 because I don't want to take any chances of finding my boat sinking because of it. So I'd rather, you know, have a hard time taking it off or drilling a hole and struggling it than always having that worrisome of not putting the right strong enough sealant. So that's my opinion. There's choices out there, but I'm going to stick to 5200. Here's the through hull transducer, as you can see right here gives me the warnings and you can see where I'm gonna mount it where that hole used to be the toilet where it used to flush flush the wastes right out to the sea but 
I'm gonna make her uh, super environmental friendly where it'll have its own storage so it's not it's gonna have a porta potty that you won't have to worry about any of that stuff so she'll be very legal and lake safe and now I'm making use out of that hole from this transducer which I'm gonna try to fit on here as you see it's a little big which is good I can give this a nice snug fit oops whoops Gonna use this to widen that hole so I can get a nice snug fit in there. Also, you can see the uh, little arrow there pointing. It's very important to have that arrow read the directions on your through hole to make sure so that way you have your accurate reading of the depth. So, as you see, that little arrow is facing the bow. Nice hand tighten, a nice circumference of sealant all around, about a quarter plus inch. So I can have some confidence that she's gonna be safe and, and leak proof. I'm going to use two fiberglasses for this repair, as you can see. I'm going to use the mat, which gives it the ultimate strength. And I'm going to use the cloth for the final edges, the final details. And uh, shout out to Boatworks today. I did a lot of research on fiberglass repairs and uh, to his ideas. I have gotten a lot of inspiration from his ideas on fiberglass repair. The mat is the backbone of strength and he says it's best to tear it rather than even cutting it because matting that down as you'll see in the video is how I'm going to anchor this. So I'm just going to tear it to fit just like this. Tear this. Let that, those bristles give it strength and I'm going to use it right over my template like this. And there's a nice strong piece right there. Okay, got the hole prepped ready for glassing. I bevel both sides for additional strength, as you can see. I'm going to use this aluminum tape. It's uh, like aluminum foil, but it's tape that sticks on. I got this at Harbor Freight. Works really well. Good for all fiberglass projects. Goes on just like this. Coat repaired, sanding hole is officially gone. Now here's another problem. Anybody with a boat this large, they either have it on stands or it's up on a crane or if they're fortunate to have a trailer like I have, um, I gotta figure out a way to treat the bottom of this keel. As you can see, it's on that board. Well, the way how I'm going to tackle it, I don't really want to do it. 
and it, it's already wedged up on here like this. So I'm gonna take a saw and cut this and remove this board. And uh, I'll eventually replace this board again. And I might even try to put some carpet or something so that way it doesn't rub up on the new paint finish when I fix this keel. But what's the point of fixing this whole keel when the bottom's all corroded? So what I'm gonna do, you watch and see. I'm gonna cut this so I have a few inches to work from the bottom so I can grind it and sand it and paint it from the bottom. Mainly, if I'm, you know, I'm probably gonna miss this area. But that's really not going to harm the boat. You won't really see it. And uh, the fact that I'll be taking this out every season, I'll be able to touch that up. So the main thing is to get this key. So watch what I do. And you can see I've got it all sanded down pretty good. Before I take these boards down and let the keel rest by itself, I'm going to work under the boat as much as I can to get all the uh, sanding done and um, basically getting the crease right here as you can see this is the time consuming part so I'm just chipping away all the old epoxy paste as you can see right there and just using the wire brush and going like this right along it after I chipped it away When you sand, you're able to find blisters like this one. Watch, water just is coming right out of this. So it's a good sign of sandblasting here if you want to do it right. Found another one over there. So by doing this light sanding, I'm able to find the blisters, which I will dig these out. You can see right here it's how soft. And I will just uh, fill in with some uh, gel coat or epoxy putty. Well, as you can see, the drain hole is completely filled in, sandblasted the hole, and I found about six blisters. As you can see right here, I went as far as I could. They say to let this dry for about two weeks, but between that time, I'll have lots to do. Correction, I said I was gonna put gel coat. Do not do that. I'm gonna reinforce it with sheets of uh, matted down fiberglass and use epoxy for extra strength and then put some gel coat and sand it. And that'll be the most uh, strongest way to repair that since it's halfway through the fiberglass. So, as you can see, all sandblast. Also, working on this um, engine well, quite a bit of abuse sanding it right through this edge. This thing is just really rotted out. Basically, I took a finger and just punched that right through. That's how weak it was. So I'm going to have to think of my own creative repair on that. So I'm probably going to mat it down with some fiberglass and put some Bondo glass and some uh, gel coat out over the epoxy. So it's a little ugly right now, but we're reinforcing the structure for long life durability of the old Columbia.